Hello and welcome to another historic video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, red and green or teamer colored energy deck and this is a slightly more controlling variant than the ones you might have seen before as we're also playing with a Dynavolt Tower, a blast from the past here, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell we get two energy, can tap it, pay five energy to deal three damage to any target, so a great way to deal with the various creatures out of the wizard deck or the new red-white energy deck that's been popping up and this can also eventually start targeting the opponent to close out the game. And Dynavolt Tower plays exceptionally well with Aether Revolt. This new 4-mana enchantment says whenever we get one or more energy, it deals that much damage to any target. So now enabling the Dynavolt Tower gives us 2 energy, which also gives us 2 damage for free. And we could even amplify that damage if we enable Revolt, the namesake mechanic. So now we get to deal 2 additional damage on top of that, so that can also take out the opponent in a hurry. And then we've got more engine cards enabling all these synergies. The Is It Generatorium is a two mana artifact saying if we would get one or more energy, we get that much energy plus one instead. So now if we enable Dynaval Tower, we get three energy as opposed to two. And that also stacks with multiples. And then we can tap the Generatorium to draw a card, but only if we spend four or more energy this turn, which is pretty easy by just activating our Dynaval Tower, which requires five energy. And then Unstable Amulet is another source of card advantage. When it enters we get 2 energy, can tap it and pay 2 energy to exile the top card of our library, and we may play it until we exile another card with Unstable Amulet, so it can keep churning out extra cards turn after turn, and whenever we cast a spell from anywhere other than our hand, the amulet deals 1 damage to each opponent, so that can also maybe be a way to close out the game, especially in combination with Aether Revolt. Once we have Revolt enabled, that can also start adding up. And then also important to note, if the opponent does destroys our amulet, but we exile the card with it, we're still able to cast it from exile even without amulet in play, so that's also nice. And then rounding out the deck, of course, we need more ways to generate energy, and our one drops here are perfect. Tune the narrative draws a card and gives us two energy at instant speed. And then a tune with ether is the reason we're splashing for a bit of green, as another cheap sorcery that finds a basic and gives us two energy. It's another great enabler for cards like Dynavolt Tower, but also just helps to give us more energy sources on the cheap. And then a Galvanic Discharge, probably the best one mana removal spell in the format now, giving us three energy that we can spend to take out creatures or planeswalkers and of course if we had additional energy stored up we can use that as well or if we take out a smaller creature we might have some energy left over so the flexibility is great and just to show how powerful Galvanic Discharge is, we're also playing three copies of Harness Lightning, which is double the amount of mana and cannot target Planeswalkers, so it's definitely a lot worse, but it's still good enough to play in this deck since we want some cheap removal and ways to generate energy. And then Amped Raptor might be the best energy card printed in Modern Horizons 3, a 2-1 first strike, when it enters we can get to energy, and if we cast it from our hand, we get to exile cards from the top of our library until we hit a non-land card, and then cast it by paying an amount of energy equal to its mana value. So if we already have some extra energy, it can even help cast some 3 or 4 mana cards off the top of our deck, so that can also be incredibly powerful. Now we won't be able to generate extra cards from the Raptor if we cast it from an amulet, since then we're casting it out of exile, but it's still a 2-1 first strike that generates 2 energy, so it's still not too bad. And then we're also playing a counter spell, which is one of the advantages of playing blue, as we can now counter spell unless the opponent pays one mana for each energy we paid, and we get two to start out. So in the early game, this can usually counter everything, and then in the late game, once we have additional energy stored up, we can still counter additional spells, even if the opponent has a lot of lands in play already. And then if we end up spending some energy on Aether Spike, it's also maybe a way to enable the Generatorium, which is also great if we have multiple amulets in play, since then we can also spend 4 energy per turn to draw an extra card. And then, last but not least, a Rush of Inspiration is part of our mana base as a blue-red tapped land, but we can also cast it as a 3-mana instant to draw 2, and then discard a card at random unless we pay 2 energy. So it doesn't generate energy, but can maybe consume it, and is still a fine top deck in the late game. And then our mana base is also playing the full set of Prismatic Vista, and this is an important revolt enabler for Aether Revolt, so that can help deal additional damage. And then we want to be playing a bunch of basics anyways to enable a tune with Aether, so it kind of slots in perfectly and then ether hub another important land here generating energy when it enters can fix our colors early but if we can hold it and maybe play it after playing a generatorium or better yet an ether revolt it can also deal additional damage for us and then we've got a few fast lands here with copper
Upper Line Gorge and Sanctum. And then it's also worth mentioning that we have Kahira as companion, since the only creatures in this deck are dinosaurs, so that's an extra free roll and another incentive for splashing a bit of green. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gigantha as companion. And uh, yeah, we've got a keeper, I think. Start with a tapped Rush of Inspiration. Turn two, maybe start with amulets. Opponent on wizards, so we'll need the removal. Which a raptor could potentially find, although it'll be sad if I exile a three or four mana card. So that's maybe a reason to wait. And now I'm kind of liking the generatorium first. And then next turn we can go attune, get three energy, plus maybe a raptor. Or we can put our amulet to use. Yeah, we just need to find something like a Dynavolt Tower, and we can easily keep the opponent's creatures in check. Another Amulet. Yeah, let's go attune into Raptor. Get that extra energy. And we hit a two in the narrative. All right, so we get to draw a card. Up to eight energy already. And then next turn we can put our amulet to use. Opponent had the wizard's lightning, that's fine. And now a reckless charge, so Kind of implies they don't have another creature in hand to give haste to. Hits us for six. And we found the Harness Lightning, that's excellent. So step one, play Amulets, keeping a red man available. And then maybe bait out a Counterspell, don't know if they're playing... I guess they can be playing the blue Counterspell for double blue because of Gigantha. Use Amulets. And just a land. Alright, I can wait to harness lightning in the opponent's turn, maybe. Maybe they go for another reckless charge, for instance. And then I might spend four energy as opposed to three, just so I can draw with the generatorium. Uh-huh, Podon did have the Spell Pierce after all. Okay, so we're taking another six. This is getting scary. So I had a gun for Harness Lightning first. I guess um, I would have been able to pay the two for Spell Pierce, perhaps. Now, play the land. Activate Amulets. A Rush of Inspiration. Can maybe still find another lightning or discharge. Could still go for another amulet. Which can still find a Dynavolt Tower and cast it and activate it. Aether Spike, that's not too helpful. So a draw with Generatorium. Alright, there we go, discharge. And uh, I can beat Spell Pierce, especially with Aether Spike. So I could just pass the turn here. Because if they don't have a way to enable Symmetry Sage, it doesn't deal any damage, so I could maybe Rush of Inspiration instead. Right, Wizard's Lightning goes face. So let me step one, discharge the Symmetry Sage. While we can pay for Spell Pierce. And then I can Aether Spike the Wizard's Lightning. And it does feel like they have a bunch more burn spells in hand, which is going to be difficult to fight through since we only have so many counter spells and no real life gain. Up 
but we'll see. Tune the narrative, that's fine. They might have some creature removal in hand, like their own uh, Galvanic Discharge. And another tune, okay. Eight energy, that's acceptable. So can I afford to play Generatorium? Maybe start by using the unused amulet. Ether Vault, that's potentially exciting. If possible, I want to have an instant speed answer to a creature, and I guess tune with Ether Vault would do it, thanks to the Generatorium here. And then I guess we can still play this as a land for now, since we have another one in hand. And uh, if I wanted to, I could use amulets, just so I can draw. Okay. And then I'll hang on to the instant speed energy maker. And Red Horde Arcanists, that's fine. Don't need to take it out now, keep my instant speed answer for Den of the Bugbear. And a tune with Aether is enough to take out the Arcanist. But we also want to look into maybe being aggressive and going for lethal here. As our opponent now puts us in burn range. Okay, so can I win the game next turn with Aether Vault? So if I play Copper Line Gorge... We don't trigger Amulet, it's only when we cast. So Tune here would generate 3 energy, deal 3, points at 11. Generatorium, a Tune is 4 energy, 4 damage, points at 7. Yeah, I don't really see it happening next turn, so just gotta hope they don't draw another burn spell. Or we draw a counter spell, alright, now we've got insurance. So feel pretty good about it. Play Generatorium into a tune. Take out Arcanists. And do we want tapped or untapped? At this point, I'll maybe go for untapped so I can inspiration and tune the narrative. And I don't really care about Copper Line Gorge. So we can use double amulet if we'd like. Just so I can draw with both generatoriums. Prismatic Vista, way to enable revolt on Aether Revolt. So yeah, next turn we should comfortably be able to go for lethal. And I'll just keep up my mana, I think. Alright, we should have it locked up here. Giganta goes to hand. So yeah, if I go for Rush of Inspiration, our opponent could still kill me with a burn spell, so I do need to keep up Aether Spike at all times. So I'll just wait to enable Revolt before we tune the narrative. And then use this amulet. Find another tune. Alright, so that should help out. So Revolt has been enabled. Trigger Amulets, which also works better with Aether Revolt on the battlefield. That's another 4 damage, and then another tune will do it. Well, this was definitely a close one, down to 1 life. But yeah, once we get to this stage of the game, we can easily mow down all creatures. So it's just the burn spells we're worried about. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Allura's deck. So it could be the new red-white energy build, in which case this hand's quite good. We've got some early removal, amulet for card advantage, and uh, I'll keep up discharge turn once as if plenty of one drops we can target. And then it's all about getting to the late game. If our opponent has a powerful start with lots of one drops and two for ones, they can sort of overwhelm us. But once we get to turn four, turn five, if the board is under control, and we find some of our card draw engines, we should be able to take over quite comfortably. Alright, never mind. This might be a ninja deck with a bunch of ninjutsu synergies. So do we want to take out the outcast? Yeah, I mean, if we take out their creature, they can ninjutsu anything, so... Could also wait for them to put the ninja in play and then take it out. But this will slow them down. 
and then I do want to resolve amulets before they can maybe take it away with a discard spell. There's an argument for holding Ether Hub until maybe we find a way to get more energy out of it, but for now it's fine. So yeah, it looks like blue black ninjas. Maybe playing the new Satoru. Forced to cast a thousand faced shadow. Okay, can uh, activate amulet, see what we get. And tune with ethers, fine. And a prismatic vista. Can hang on to that for as long as possible in case we find ether revolt. And for now, a tune. Maybe keep a Parnas Lightning and wait to take out the creature after the Ninjutsu. As opposed to taking out the Shadow right now. And I'll go for another Mountain. So Shadow attacks. No blockers. And there's a hacker, so we can uh, try and harness lining that one. I don't think there's ninjutsu for single black, but I may be mistaken. I guess maybe with uh, a rebalance there is ninjutsu for blue and black hybrid from their uh, lord. Because yeah, this is now an unblocked creature, so they can still pick it back up with another ninjutsu card. So maybe should have thought about that a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not a disaster if they get to draw a card here. But yeah, now I can harness lining it without them being able to ninjutsu something else. And yeah, there's a silver for master, so they could have ninjutsued here. And that's fine, we'll take out the master. And Dynavolt Tower is going to be excellent. So next turn, play Tower, tune the narrative, shoot down the hacker. And now every instant and sorcery will generate additional energy for us. I'll wait on activating amulets since we might prefer energy for Dynavolt Tower. So we've got plenty of energy sinks, might need more ways to generate energy in the first place. So finding our other two mana artifact would be nice. But now just deploying their hand with another master. And there's Aether Revolt, perfect. So, if I play Revolt now, we have Prismatic Vista to enable it, but no energy card to really get it going. But I feel like if I just cast it here, what's the worst that can happen? Opponent has a few discard spells to take away all my energy cards, and then we're in top deck mode. But uh, yeah, if Aether Revolt resolves here and we get to keep it in play, it should be able to deal with our board pretty easily. Alternatively, I can still harness lightning and maybe activate amulet, but uh, I think it's worth it. Hopefully they can kill me out of nowhere, but with master it is possible. And uh, shadow here since they can make a bunch of copies of one creature. And yeah, they've got another shadow, copy master. So it is going to get pretty scary. So that's 16 damage. So we're still alive. Prismatic Vista will put us to 1. And our opponent's got a Retrofitter Foundry. Doesn't matter for now. Good with Ornithopter. So yeah, we get to untap, and Ether Hub was a great draw, as it will generate energy, in turn giving us some damage with Ether Revolt. So step one is fetch, enabling Revolt on Ether Revolt. Get a mountain, play Ether Hub, 
and then we're going to want to take out the silver for masters and as soon as we take out one the others will shrink down so it's going to be kind of a domino effect so what's our next play maybe start with the amulets we'll generate more energy and take care of a master here the other master will die as well so now we're down to two creatures and a harness lightning in hand dynavolt tower can also activate so we definitely have enough tools to take them both out so let me maybe start with an amulet see what we find amped raptor that's not going to cast anything from exile since it's cast from exile instead of from our hand but can still trigger the amulets which will deal a bit of damage with ether vault so let's harness lightning can take care of silver for master and then i guess because we generate energy from dynavolt tower as well that triggers ether vault which can help take out the thousand faced shadow now I'm wondering if we could have maybe just taken out the opponent if I went face instead of taking out their creatures. But we get another Aether Revolt trigger from Harness Lightning as well. Opponent's down to 8 since, yeah, with uh, Revolt enabled, Aether Revolt does not mess around. So now Dynavolt Tower will deal 5 damage, putting the opponent to 3. And then, yeah, I guess if I just cast the Amped Raptor from Exile, it triggers both amulets. So that should be game. So we actually had quite a bit of damage to spare. So yeah, that's the power of Aether Vault if you do get to untap with it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we've got a keepable hand. May want to wait on a tune until after we play the Generatorium. And then for now keep up Discharge, turn to play our artifacts and then we can attune to look for maybe a blue source. Well, let's see what we're up against. Blue-white could be control. And then next turn one playing Ether Hub will generate an extra energy. Okay. So we'll get an island here. And keep up our counter spell. If not, we can tune the narrative. Opponent passes. I could also wait, since we're not really in a hurry. Save myself one energy. So now we can tune without wasting any of our energy. This charge can also hit Planeswalkers at least, so that's still useful. Okay, and we found some of our nice 2 for ones Can start with Amped Raptor, perhaps. That resolves. And hits Tune the Narrative, so luckily it didn't hit our counter spell, since that's a bit of a nombo. Hitting a removal spell also not the best. And I'll uh, play a tap land here, keep up Aether Spike, and then maybe next turn go for Amulet. Opponent's got a Wandering Emperor, I think that's acceptable. We'll just take it out with a Discharge. But maybe not before we uh, untap, because I do want to keep up Aether Spike for maybe a scarier threat. Like if a Teferi were to show up, that could be bad if we just used Discharge on Wandering Emperor. So they can grow the Samurai, that's fine. We'll find another removal spell at some point. Take our turn, find another Spike. Okay, so step one, probably Amulet. They might fight over this. That resolves. And let's see what we hit. A Galvanic Discharge. Okay, so we can cast it and just target the Wandering Emperor or we can go for the Samurai first. And then we should be able to activate the Generatorium since we spent energy on Amulet and Discharge. Opponent maybe has a second Wandering Emperor. All right, no, Dovin's Veto. That's acceptable. 
So I guess we didn't get to spend enough energy to draw. So I can discharge again. Now our opponent can maybe counter with uh, no more lies. Question is whether I want to fight over it with Ether Spike. I think we don't. Let's just let our opponent untap and again play it safe. We've got a nice card draw engine, actually two of them. And the turn I Ether Spike something, we can also discharge and then I'll be able to draw. So we're not really in a hurry. The 2 2 Samurai cannot attack past our Raptor. So we'll just take three. And take our turn. Dino Vault Towers, excellent. Two. So step one, activate Amulet. Find an Attune. I might want to fight over Tower with double Aether Spike. Otherwise, I would play Tower, Attune for another island. Probably could have tapped better, because now I only have one Spike available. A Reprieve to send it back. That's not the end of the world. So we can still attune. Get an island. And then use Discharge on, I want to say, probably the Wandering Emperor itself. Opponent had the No More Lies, as we suspected. I think we let that slide. Again, I'm being pretty conservative here. But Dynavolt Tower should be able to take care of their threats pretty easily. Once we get it down, and I would rather protect the tower. And then tower plus generatorium is an awesome engine. Kind of happy they made a pair of 3-3s, three because they still die to tower as opposed to a 4-4. Four four. Although we could also combine first strike with the damage from tower. So we're pulling ahead in resources, even though we're currently behind on board. Opponent playing the new ambush. Okay, so can go ahead and maybe use Amulet first. Finds Harness Lightning, that's good. And then play Tower. And we're prepared to fight over it. Snapcaster Dovin's Veto would counter it even through Aether Spike, so we need to spike the Snapcaster. Sadly, we lose out on the extra energy here. And our opponent reprieving our Aether Spike. They could have also reprieved their own Snapcaster. It is kind of scary if we tap out on our opponent play something like a Farewell, which can exile our artifacts. But I guess now that Snapcaster doesn't have any mana, it's fine if it resolves. So, no harm, no foul. And then we can still use Discharge or Tower or both. And keep up Aether Spike. So Tower takes out probably the Wandering Emperor. Now we can draw. Find another Spike. And I'll use a Discharge now so we're not under too much pressure. Okay. Keep up Spike. And then Harness Lightning we can use next turn. I'll take another 3 from the Samurai. So that kind of works out. The Snapcaster interaction was a little awkward. Can block the Snapcaster. Do have to watch out for Hall of the Storm Giants, which we're not that great at answering. But that's where a Harness Lightning could help. Opponent with a Lockdown, which would take care of basically everything except for Dynavolt Tower. Yeah, that's probably worth fighting over. Opponent could counter back, of course. But we'll give it a try. That works. And they had another one. Alright, it's too bad. 
did find another amulet. Activate amulet. Find another one. And then I guess currently there's just no target for Harness Lightning, otherwise we might still be able to cast it here. I guess I'll just pass a turn, no need to use the Author Amulet just yet. Actually just realized the uh, hall is Ward 3 and not Ward 2, so if they activate it here we could just be dead, since I wouldn't be able to pay for it. So an untapped land would be bad, opponent just draws 3. Yeah, at this stage in the game that might be worth fighting over. So they had the land, which would have meant Hall could have been lethal here. So glad they didn't go for it. Now, do we want to start firing tower at their face? I guess we'll see what amulet finds first. And generatorium. Yeah, we should have plenty of energy here. And now a discharge as well. Alright, so now we're in the clear. Play this. Deal some more damage. And we'll just pass a turn. Could also put Kahira in hand. But then I wouldn't be able to pay the ward again, so yeah, let's just pass. Farewell. Yeah, that's definitely worth countering. And our opponent explodes, yeah. Dynavolt Tower can deal some more damage here. And then with double amulet we can burn them to death. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck. So happy to have lots of cheap removal. Yeah, this hand could work. Play a tapped Blue Red Dual Land here. Can maybe keep up Ether Spike turn two. And then start answering the board. If we have a little bit of energy left over before playing Raptor, that would be ideal. Alright, so opponent's a blue-white affinity style deck with a bunch of Thopters. Yeah, I'll uh, maybe still keep up Ether Spike. If they play the Thopter Generator, we can still take it out before it gives them a Thopter in their upkeep. Could also now go Ether Hub into Raptor. And then I can still cast any 3 mana spell I exile, so the only other card we cannot cast is Ether Revolt, which is not very likely. So yeah, I'm not hating on Raptor here. And get a free attune. Which wants to get another mountain. And then Aether Revolt is going to be pretty exciting if we can get it down. What we don't have is clean answers to an artifact that's not a creature, so the Foundry could be scary if they draw it. Although I imagine we would have seen that turn one if they had it. But maybe keeping up their Counterspell with Improvise, which kind of plays into keeping up Counterspells ourselves. They also didn't attack with Hope of Girapur. Opponent passes. And I really want them to tap out so we can resolve Aether Revolt. It's going to be even better before we empty out our hand of energy makers. But uh, maybe we'll have to take out Hope of Girapur before it hits me. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And if they want to fight over this... That works for me. Opponent's gonna fight with Metallic Rebuke. Yeah, I mean, I could fight back just so they don't have a chance of sacking Hope of Girapur and preventing me from casting Aether Revolt. And then, uh, yeah, play Aether Revolt. And then now we can start mowing down their creatures pretty easily. Don't know if they have main deck answers to a 4 mana enchantment. But if we get to untap with it here, we should be in the driver's seat. Another hope of Girapur is fine. And we should be able to even handle 
the uh, Thopter Foundry now, as we can pretty easily handle 4-4 creatures with Aether Revolt. So they might have had a pretty reactive hand, maybe multiple Metallic Rebukes, and get lost. Interestingly, could have destroyed our enchantments, so that feels like a mistake, or they didn't realize they could target enchantments. But yeah, Pwn is about to regret their decision, so play Amulets. We get two energy, take out Hope of Girapur. And might as well have a look. Prismatic Vista can enable Revolt on Aether Revolt next turn, and the yeah, our opponent realized their mistake. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a reasonable hand facing Yorion, so can expect a more controlling matchup. So we've got quite a bit of removal, but then also some nice engine cards. Opponent cycling a troll, possible they have a reanimation package. And yeah, I think I'll just tap out for an Amped Raptor here. Could also wait until we build up a little bit more energy, I suppose. So I'm guaranteed to cast a 3 or 4 drop if we exile it. And if we had a removal spell, it's better if there's already a creature in play. Alright, so we can keep up Aether Spike and just cast in a tune here. And then if I can save Prismatic Vista until after we play Aether Revolt, it's better. So I'm just gonna go Shields up on Spike and maybe next turn play Raptor with Spike backup. Peddler, I see. So basically a discard effect. Yeah, that's essentially gonna get rid of my counter spell. So I may as well cast it now. And then I can resolve something powerful, like an Aether Vault, perhaps. Might be better than Dynavolt Tower at this point. Okay, we'll see what happens next. Skyclave, that's too bad. Gets rid of our enchantments. Although now we can play the Raptors since we'll be able to have four energy afterwards. And then maybe play Dynavolt Tower as well. That's not bad. So we've spent two energy already. Could cast a removal spell here just to spend two more, get a 4-4 and be able to draw a card. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Can make it Harness Lightning. I suppose if they fight over this, keeping up Discharge might have been better. But that works. And draw a card. And then next turn, Dynavolt Tower, plus some cantrips, might hang on to tune until after we play Tower to get more energy out of it. And our opponent has Fatal Push for the token. That's acceptable. Another one for Rancture. Okay. They are slowly depleting their resources, and we've got plenty more engines coming up. Captain's not bad though. So you can put one of them in play. And divine our fates, so yeah they've got kind of the reanimation angle here. So diviner absolutely needs to go. Play tower. Play Generatorium, and then Discharge. Pay for energy. Get to draw two cards. And 
and then tower can take care of the captain and enable the generatoriums once again. So yeah, we've got a pretty neat engine going. Another Skyclave was to be expected. Now let's read this carefully. So, X up to one target, no land, no token permanent. So yeah, even if I remove Apparition and Response, it's not like I prevent them from exiling. In fact, it's worse, because then I don't get a token. But they're likely going for Tower. No, going for Generatorium. That happens. I'll just take three, save my energy to use Tower in my turn when I can also draw a card. And Discharge was great too. Alright, so maybe start with Unstable Amulet. See what it reveals. Another Amulet, that's also good. So we can play it. Deal one damage. And then take out the captain. Or we could also just activate another amulet and then draw, and then I don't even have to use tower. That's also fine. So we spend four energy, so this can now draw. And we have a harness lining at the ready. Could have maybe tapped a bit better to leave myself with more red mana. Let's uh, maybe get rid of the Apparition before they can maybe flicker it. Alright, so now we don't need to worry about Apparition exiling more of our stuff. Opponent had another Fatal Push, that's fine. Don't need those illusions to win the game. Charming Prince resolves. It's gonna scry too. Yeah, if our opponent can keep playing small creatures that die to tower, I'll be happy. I'll take three from Captain for now. And Soul Herder, that needs to die. So before it gets a chance to trigger, we can Harness Lightning it. Get a bunch of energy, a bunch of damage. And we only need to spend one. Alright, so we get to see our energy control deck in action. Sometimes it feels more like a combo deck when you're going off with Aether Vault, and that card certainly impressed. It does remain a 4 mana enchantment that doesn't necessarily have an immediate impact when you play it, so it can go overboard playing too many copies, but yeah, once it lands, if you have a somewhat stable board, it can take over very quickly and help you close out games, and then all the other artifacts that generate energy and can uh, draw you extra cards like the amulets have been incredibly impressive. Also very synergistic with Aether Revolt, so the deck just works very nicely together and gets to play with some of the best removal spells in the format, like Static Discharge, which is going to see play in a lot of red decks going forward. So yeah, the deck's quite powerful. It can still be kind of run over if the opponent has a particularly aggressive start with lots of one-drops, since we don't have any board wipes, but that's something you could also easily address, sprinkle in a couple sweepers, so those aggressive decks won't be able to blitz you out of the game. And also a lot of fun to play, and it's kind of a different twist on the control archetype, so I highly recommend it, and it's also not too expensive to put together, since it's a lot of commons and uncommons. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.